Hello and welcome to another mass session. I'm delighted today to be joined by Sean Sayward, who is the Governance Director at the Hotel Booking Agents Association, the HBAA, as you might know them. And she's also Director of Commercial Partnerships and Projects at Intel. How are you, Sean? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I thought maybe you just give us a quick introduction, really, as to yourself. You know, who is Sean Sayward and what does she do? Um, well, Sean Sayward has been around for a little while. Um, I started young in the industry, so that's why I still look, you know, 21. Um, but I probably have been around for about 20 years. 16 of those have been at Intel, actually, in various roles. Um, but my background and specialism um, was in hotels originally you know, on the revenue management side, which is why I quite like talking to hotels about revenue management and strategy, having been there as well. And then at Intel, I have progressed through starting as a conference consultant, working my way right the way through. And now I look after all of our commercial partnerships with uh, across all sectors. So travel, accommodation, events, anything like that. Um, and I also take on any projects that we have from a business perspective as well. So and uh, kind of a little bit of hand in everything. Um, across the industry. I've been involved with the HBA, started off on one of their committees all five or six years ago now and joined the board last year. Um, Started off looking after membership and then moved over to governance because my background is procurement and governance and contracting. So it seems a better fit for me. A jack, of, a jack of all trades, no doubt. Yeah, master uh, of some, but definitely not yeah. all. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So maybe you could just give us a quick sort of summary, really, about how the HBAA has evolved over 2020. We're going to come on to the new structure that was yeah. released uh, a couple of weeks ago. But just give us an overview, really, of how the how the associations sort of evolved over the course of 2020 and the landscape of COVID. Yeah. Well, I mean, we started, if I just track back a little bit to pre-COVID, actually, we had started as a board to really look at what the association should or could look like uh, pre-COVID around the the back end of 2019. We were coming into our last year of a five-year strategy. So it was time to start looking at what the next five years and beyond looked like at that point. We were hoping to do another five-year strategy with uh, roles, responsibilities, objectives all to be set together. And then obviously January, February hit, we were all guns blazing. Back into February, COVID really threw everything, you know, for, for the whole industry. And that then paused us for a little bit. And it it was one of those defining moments where we sat around the table virtually. Um, do we crack on? Do, do we go through the whole process and do we push forward with what we were going to do or do we actually now need to change what we're doing now and what what do our members need from us now because this isn't going away I think there were there were camps weren't there in February and March of optimism and oh it's only temporary and this will be gone in a few weeks and if that had been the case we would have just rolled the way through with our new visions but actually I, I was in one of the camps that didn't think it was going away I thought this was here to stay we on in my in my day job we're we're business travel so we'd already seen on the travel side especially in the Middle East and things like that the the, the impact that this was having so we knew it wasn't going to go away in a few weeks so from an association perspective we we were trying to think well what do our members need from us in the next six months now because it's not about the bigger vision it's not about a five-year strategy at this moment we are in survival mode and so are our members so how do we get them through the next six months? How do we get them through the next six weeks at that point? Mm. So the vision and the plan got put on hold for a little while um, and we progressed that through what do we need? And, and it became very clear, actually, we weren't big enough as a board to support the membership completely. There are The old structure is there's four board members in the old structure plus a consultant directive, director, um, it wasn't enough when we're all trying to manage our day jobs as well. We're all volunteers. So one of the part of the process was we have to start looking at what, how big do we need to be to manage the number and the members that we had. And we had new members throughout 2020 because they were coming to us for support and looking to us for guidance. And you can't do that with four of you and doing a day job when you're all in survival mode in your own businesses as well. So we very clearly knew we needed to expand the board and the focus for us was what does that look like? Who do we need to bring in? Where are the gaps? We did gap analysis on 
what, what skills do we have? What do the current board need? But also then what do our members need that we're not giving them? And what they needed was a voice um, and a strong voice and a collaborative voice. We've always stood a little bit on our own, I think, as an association. Um, and actually, that's not how it should be. We should be collaborating with across the industry and the, the initiatives that came across One Industry, One Voice, we make events, all of that stuff. I'm not sure a few years ago the HBO would possibly have got as involved in those as, as we did have. It probably wouldn't have crossed the radar, but it, was, it wasn't even a choice. It, you know, they were things that had to be done and had to be involved in and we needed to not just be part of them but be trying to drive them as well from our in, for, from an industry perspective so it kind of the strategy was still there but it evolved because of covid um and it actually has 2020 has probably shaped the new strategy in a way that it wouldn't have been before COVID yeah, and say, what we now need to do t- take us through then the new the new structure i mean yeah. you know let's make it digestible as best as we can uh you know for any prospective members and you know existing mm-hmm. members alike what does it actually set out to achieve so what we're gonna set out to achieve is that we are we 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 I think we were trying to be a lot of things to a lot of people in the old structure. We're a big membership, quite diverse, and to cover all the bases is actually quite difficult. And what I think we were doing, we were being semi-successful at everything we did as opposed to completely successful in what we should be doing. So the idea now of the strategy for 2021 is to provide focus, direction, content and vision for members and that we can measure that and that it's recognised because a lot of what we did was all brilliant but there was no measurement and there was no, how do you know if you're successful just by sending a survey? It doesn't work like that these days. So what we've decided to do is base our strategy on four pillars of, of and themes that everything we do as an association will tie back to. So it's resilience, innovation, ethics and quality. And those are the four pillars that will now underpin every single thing that we do, whether that's a meeting, whether that's an in industry initiative, whether that's anything we do, it has to relate back to those four pillars. And how is that going to benefit members? And I guess, you know, this is a, an opportunity to make clear to perhaps prospective members yep. what they might benefit from HBAA membership. Sure. So within those four pillars, we are committed. So if I take resilience first, we will ensure that our members are best placed to adapt and grow wherever they, the challenges come, because we've been fo- so focused on COVID and everyone in our industry has because it's decimated us. But there's been other things going on. We have Brexit literally around the corner, which is going to have a massive effect on some of our members, especially those ones that track, you know, trade overseas uh, and things like that. And that's kind of slipped by and it's making sure that actually we can we can manage different things that happen all at the same time and i don't think pre covid we would have we would have been able to so we need to manage covid we need to manage brexit we might need to to manage a domestic issue that's coming forward and that's what we need to make sure because a lot of our members don't have access they're not large agents they don't have their own marketing companies they don't have their own pr companies anything like that who would feed information to them we need to make sure that we're doing it and that that's the resilience part of it we're going to proactively collaborate with other industry associations other industry voices to make sure that it's not just the hba saying this or it's not just the mia or it's not just these, we should all be saying it together because it's pointless us not saying the same message because we all want the same thing for our industry, which is to survive and thrive. Ab- ab- absolutely spot on. And that sort of leads me on to my last question, really. What would you and well, what would the HBAA like to see happen with regards to wider governance of the events industry? Because like you say, you know, we can all work in silos, different associations appeal mm-hmm. to different subsects of the industry. But then there are so there is so much crossover sometimes yeah. it's hard to have those defined barriers. And of course, that you know results in the fragmentation that we all know and love so dearly. So what would you like to see with regards to wider governance? Um, and I think for me, recon, rec- recognition as a sector at government level would would be the ultimate because like you say there's we are recognized business travel is recognized as a sector. We you know we we have we have a voice in that area. But events get lumped in together with public events with this with with weddings and things and all of those have a need and as a country we need all of those things but business meetings business accommodation business events are a different sector and they should be treated differently and we're not recognized like that there's no 
understanding of the value or the contribution that those sectors bring in to our economy uh, that has been highlighted throughout COVID hasn't it I mean you you yourself I mean how much campaigning have we had to do all of this to even get you know a, a toe through the door of people listening to us and do you know what for for the value that we bring it shouldn't be like that it's beyond frustrating that we still have that the SIC code issue massive for us we are not recognised getting that's that was one of the challenges that a lot of our members faced was they couldn't get grants. They weren't eligible for them. They didn't understand that they couldn't get the relief because the SIC code was wrong. But it was wrong because the real one doesn't exist. So I know I sound like I'm quite passionate about that. And I am because it really annoys me. You know what? So... You, well, you, you and I are now best friends because as everyone else will know, the, the SIC code <laughs> system is something I've been banging oh. about for most of the year. It's There's only three that represent yeah. the events industry in its entirety. Activities of conference organiser, activities of exhibition organiser and mm-hmm. event catering. There is one for venues, but it's quite woolly. But we yeah. we all fit in the, into the sort of service sector bracket of of the list yeah. so it does need a, it needs an overhaul it's not just one code it's a series of codes yeah. and uh, yeah like you say because we fell through so many gaps service service sector industry uh so many businesses were unable to get grants and local yeah. authorities it's not just the cent- it's not just central government i actually think we'd have an easier job campaigning to central government than we would do Locally, 300 or so local authorities across across the country that's where you know the they hold the key to, to so many mm-hmm. things like that in their local areas so yeah it's a real it's a real challenge so let's summarize okay. then i mean are you are you positive that we're going to come back a stronger industry in 2020 uh, I think 2021 might be a little bit early, if I'm honest. But I, I do, as I said before, I work in the, on the on the the finance and the risk management. One, one of my areas that I look after is risk management. So I would always going to be risk adverse. So I think I feel more positive now than I did a few weeks ago, if I'm honest, about recovery and the road to recovery. I think the, the news about the vaccines is is positive. Um, I don't think we will be right back where we were in 2021 um, to pre-COVID levels. I think for me, that's kind of 2022 being realistic, but I think it will be positive. But what I would say is I don't think we should go back to how we were. We have to come back better. And that's what I think one of my wishes would be, that there is, as an industry, whether it's regulatory, whether it's governance, whether it's just collaboration or something like that, we are, the fragmented bit has to stop. Otherwise, we we haven't learned anything from this, and that 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 for me is the biggest takeaway. There's so much red tape still. There's so much challenges that we have in an industry that we cause ourselves a lot of the time. And I think we should we, we need to try and stop that. So it's not coming back stronger. It's coming back better. Work definitely. smarter, not necessarily yeah. harder. What a fantastic yeah, definitely. Way. What a fantastic way in which to finish up, Sean. <laughs> that was a fascinating interview. Thank you so much for stopping by. No problem.